Hey everyone, welcome to the Fan Club YouTube channel. I'm Will. I'm Lawson. And I'm Austin. Join us every Monday for interviews with top athletes, creators, and entertainers from all around the world. So please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And thank you for joining our Fan Club community. Now please enjoy this episode. Well, welcome back to the Fan Club podcast, everybody. I am not Will Blake today because we are actually about to dive into a really good conversation with Will Blake. And funny story about that. We've had a little bit of trouble getting podcast guests on the summer because I guess everyone's like super busy throughout the whole entire uh, July and August that it's kind of hard to interview people. So we thought we're going to take this opportunity and just do internal interviews, but we're going to interview each other. And we're starting with Will Blake. I'm going to do a real big deep dive on him right from his past up until now. He's going to tell his story. We're going to ask questions about him and it is going to be awesome. So, Will, come on in, buddy. Hey Give him a little clap. Showing up late. How you doing? Casually late. Hi, guys. Hey. Hello. How's it going? Oh, he has his name tag on too, just in case we uh, forgot who our guest was today. You know, I, I don't think too much preparation went into this, so I wanted to make sure you knew who you were interviewing. You're right. We did no preparation. We just want this to be fun. We want to be very candid and uh, just, yeah, yeah, figure out who you really <laughs> kind of are. Nervous. We did so little preparation. We didn't even write our own questions. We let the fans actually... Uh, write most of them for us so I expected nothing less it's gonna make it better though thanks again everyone who contributed saved us a little bit of work that's for sure well i think we're like so used to talking to each other that it would be we don't need questions i think we somewhat know will's life but i want to hear it and actually talk to him about it and we don't need questions for that cool we don't need any questions well this is great being a guest on my own show <laughs> yeah you are you are a guest on your own show it's weird we're flipping the script on you all right put on my whole new alter ego yeah this is your chance you can rewrite your story right here <laughs> yeah let's kick it off just like we know where you're from and everything and your upbringing but born and raised right there right from the very beginning all right i was born and raised in uh champlin minnesota which is about 15 minutes Basically directly north of uh, downtown Minneapolis, so your typical suburban kid. Um, the oldest of three boys. Uh, been playing hockey my whole life because uh, my dad played college hockey, so he was, be sh he was very sure to get me and my two younger brothers into the game basically right away when we could walk. Um, yeah, after that, after eighth grade, I moved and went, I didn't move, but I went to a private school for high school. Um, in Golden Valley, Minnesota, called Breck School, um, where, yeah, super fun being able to play Minnesota college hockey, as I always brag to you guys about, because it was basically the closest thing to the NHL I'll ever get. Um, got to experience that, and then post-graduation there, I actually moved up to Winkler, Manitoba, where I got to meet Lawson and play with him for a year before he moved on. Um, spent two years there, and then was recruited to UWS, just like all you guys, and I guess that's where our story began. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your childhood. When you played hockey when you were a kid, I think every kid has a really funny hockey story from when they're really young. Do you have any really funny memories? You know, I was, believe it or not, I don't know if this is believable. I think it is, but I was kind of more of the shy teammate growing up in, like, youth hockey. Um I was always a little bit more reserved and I had like my friends were all the ones who were getting in trouble and like doing all the stupid things in hotels and everything. And I was I was kind of there, but I was a little timid growing up and never really jumped into all the action like uh like you know what goes on in youth hockey tournament hotels or road trips or running around the hotel till late at night getting in trouble stealing stuff off the soap cart or snack bar or whatever it is. Um yeah, I was always a little bit quieter and i don't know if that's just because i was the first born and my parents were a little more stricter with me is that where is that how you say it more stricter mm -hmm. more strict um 
but yeah, b- definitely the funniest story ever was, um, this is how timid I was <laughs> in triple a hockey. We were at a Fargo tournament. It was actually, this game was actually in Moorhead, but, uh, we went to a shootout and my coach picked me to go. And before, before the shootout, he's like, don't do anything fancy, nothing fancy. We just want to win. Nothing fancy, nothing fancy. And I went down and I did the spinorama and scored <laughs> oh, oh, and I got yeah. back and like after the game, I like apologized to my coach for doing something fancy. <laughs> like that's how timid and like, yeah, kind of like worried about breaking the rules I was. Well, I can't see you. I can see you being timid, but like not that timid because you're not timid now. Yeah, but as a kid, I can, I, I knew you wouldn't be a rule breaker. That's no, for sure. Definitely was not. That's a just rule not breaker. you. Not until I got a little older. Yeah. And you realized it was a little more fun. Then I realized <laughs> there's really not that much they can do unless you do something really bad. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good story though. Yeah, my yeah. parents always make fun of me when the Moorhead or for the Iceman. It's Minnesota Iceman. Is that team? They always make fun of me for being like, remember when you got super sad and like scared that your coach was going to bench you for scoring in a shootout? Yeah. Were you? I don't were know if there's any other kid that would be upset about scoring. No. no. Just shows how nice of a guy you are. And I don't know where it. that move came from Tell either. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I can't imagine pulling a spinorama <laughs> yeah. after your coach just told you not to do anything. I just blacked out. <laughs> do we got that on video? I don't know. That was probably when we were like tape. 11 or 12. I'm not really sure. I got some really funny VHS tapes of oh, uh, yeah. playing in Grand, a Grand Forks tournament from when uh, when I was a kid. Those are so funny to watch how like you're just – would fall everywhere and rip mm-hmm. around on the ice and you think it's a big game and a serious game and then oh, five yeah. years later you realize like wow that was like the worst hockey ever and <laughs> my parents definitely were the ones who got like some of those like tournament recap videos or something oh, but just of yeah. me though not my brothers but just because i was the oldest and the first one to go through it mm-hmm. like there's a few clips i think of me from like squirts scoring a few goals or something but it's just like you look so, I look so bad in those videos. I don't know how I was scoring goals. I forgot about those. You know, they it, always it, had them. There's always someone, and then you buy them, and it's like literally like five clips of you, and then just a bunch of random pictures of the team throughout the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all these other guys that are like the best players doing crazy moves. And but when you got on that video, you, like your section, then it was sweet. You're like, wow, this Get, is way worth it. Getting on that recap video, that's good. Yeah, going into. Um, I guess we can fast forward through those younger years. Probably nothing crazy happened there for you, hey? I don't know. Nothing. No big injuries? Nothing like that? I have never broken a bone in my life. Knock on wood. Knock on wood that I know of. The only thing I've ever broken was my teeth, and that was way later on. Yeah, in junior. Yeah. I think you were there for that. Yes, I was. I was. Well, great segue into junior hockey, which is, I think, the next big topic of your life is that you made a jump to move away from home pretty young well relatively young maybe yeah Um, 18 um i would say this that was like the biggest transition in my life because i'd been at home for 18 years and then moving seven hours away was like pretty eye-opening and kind of made me grow up finally and uh which i mean very thankful for being able to live in manitoba for a couple years i think that doing that and learning how to kind of take care of myself. I mean, yeah, you're still with a billet and everything, but you're not with family and you have to go and meet 20 new people who you're playing with. You're not with your high school buddies who spent the whole summer with before things like that. But, uh, yeah, I think moving away, um, that was the perfect age for me moving at 18. I think if I moved any earlier, I don't know, I probably would have been scared or been dumb i honestly have no idea though i think it worked out and we had a good group that year which uh was definitely helpful but um i'd say the biggest thing about moving away and taking two years to play junior hockey rather than going right to school was very very good decision on my end because going to school at 18 i i don't think i was ready to go to school and have to do academics and if I wasn't playing hockey, I probably would have worked during school. Um, so being able to learn how to live on your own before going to school where like things really actually mattered a little bit more, um, is definitely a good call. Yeah, that is helpful getting those years. Cause I know when we get to college, we're used to it. 
and freshmen and other people like sophomores it's like that's their first time living on their own and making food and all that but we're like pros by that point so yeah and by that time when you're 21 year old freshman you're like ah I don't need anyone to help me out. I'll exactly. cook. I'm like so excited. I'm ready. I know how to do this stuff. Yeah. The only thing you learn quick is make sure you're paying rent. Yeah. 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 And I, I feel like there's never a bad time to leave home um, because I think the ones that do go early always have good stories and experiences. But for me too, I left pretty late, like when I was even 19 and it was nice to be at home for until then. And mm -hmm. probably like kind of like you, it felt like it was a good thing that I got to stay with my family yeah. in the hometown. Uh, yeah, you move point. away, you make your mistakes, you learn pretty quickly, and then you're like, oh, this isn't too bad at all. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, I remember the first time I met you in Winkler. Do you, I don't know uh, if you remember that, but Will, Will came to play on the Flyers, which was the team that I was on, and right off the bat, I knew that this was a good guy. I knew uh, we had something in common something about being Minnesota nice, I guess, but we were friends pretty quickly. Um, I remember, I think it was even before you technically made the team. Yeah. I was still in training camp. I remember, um, all of a sudden Lyler or Lindy, whatever yeah. you guys called him then he was like, Hey, we're going to go out to this kid's house and go golfing or something. I'm like, okay. And all of a sudden we're in this car driving through Manitoba farm fields. I'm like, where are we going? Like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, I maybe have recognized you from camp or something, but then we got out there and I think we played like an eight sum of golf yeah, on that Altona golf course. And yeah, after that, that was we pretty much solidified a good friend group going into the year, which was very helpful for me. And, um, cause that was definitely a fear going up there and just kind of like spending too much time alone. I don't know how I would have done with that. So it was nice to, uh, we had a good group that year. That was fun to, and easy to, integrate into mm -hmm. did you notice the difference between uh playing in america and then coming to canada and being on a junior hockey team yeah like the people were the people different and was the vibe of being a hockey player different 100 percent because well especially playing for a private school in minnesota you just get destroyed online or chirped or whatever because everyone's like oh they recruit blah 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 whatever and then going up and it's also a little softer Oh, so okay. the high school hockey so you way softer. That. that was the first thing I noticed about the hockey in general. When I got to camp, guys were like destroying each other in <laughs> training camp. I'm like, what is going on? This is going to suck. And it was my first time wearing a visor too. Um, but yeah, I would just say like the physicality and playing against kids. Like it was probably not, this just sounds like cocky or whatever, but it's probably the, like more of the top dog junior and senior year of high school. And then once you get to a camp and you're playing against the veterans of junior hockey who have maybe been playing junior hockey for four years already, mm -hmm. and they're looking mean and they're look they're a lot stronger. I was pretty skinny and small, and uh, getting up and like that was the biggest thing I noticed that the maturity levels were a big jump. Yeah, there's always those like twenty year old guys that have just like the beards going looking just so mean and intimidating before you actually like meet them. Yeah. And our captain was hammer. Oh yeah. And I was like, this guy's gotta be 35. <laughs> he's the strongest looking guy I've ever seen. He's got six pack abs and he's like the most professional spoken person. Mm -hmm. He's quiet, but he's mean and he's leading this group of people who don't know each other. I'm like, what is this? Like we were yeah. just messing around and we were captains in high school. It didn't matter. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, and that I, me I remember, yeah, seeing guys, the, the worst part for me was, uh, I don't know, when you got, when you played a new team that you haven't seen before in warmups, and then you see all their big guys and old guys skating around that mm -hmm. you've never, you're getting a new feel for. Yeah. Uh, I was going to yeah. touch on that too, because everyone in Manitoba, like if you're from there and you played hockey, they all know of each other. So like we're driving to... I mean, I'll never forget my first time playing in OCN, which is eight hours north of Winkler. Um, one of the toughest places to play in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. And I remember hearing stories of certain players or like things that have happened. I'm like, what am I about to get into? Yeah, like, This is insane. Everyone's talking about, oh, I remember last year when so-and-so two-handed so-and-so in the wrist and like broke his arm or something. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess we'll just see how it goes. But I thought it was really cool being able to go to these new arenas 
and um experiencing junior hockey is just like people are so passionate about it like the fans winkler fans were great but then you even steinbeck fans were insane or the ocn fans like it's just it's a whole new culture and you could definitely tell that people genuinely cared about the teams and it kind of just represented the cities too which is super cool to see yeah it's almost like uh to put it in perspective it's almost like their own like mini like college football team like the whole town's around it you get new guys every year the coach is involved with the community talking with everyone so yeah some towns are definitely like that's their favorite part of the year is the hockey season yeah and being uh american because you can only have so many americans on the team or imports as they call them um you know you kind of feel bad every you don't feel bad but you're you're taking a local kid's spot if you make that team or something you're taking a manitoban spot or another canadian spot and you're like oh sorry but did you ever get nervous throughout the year if you were ever gonna get traded or cut because i think the the first yeah the first half of my first year i always i mean i was pretty like just tried to i mean obviously play as best i could and i definitely did not want to get traded to certain spots or Mm -hmm. even like if i got shipped off to I don't know, out west or Saskatchewan or something like that, it would have been a completely different story. Oh, yeah, you're like yeah. 18 it's hours It's so away. different, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, great, now i got to go meet another 20 guys, start, start it all, all over, over. Yeah. right? And um, that, I mean, that's hockey, though, and you, I probably would have been just fine and make friends and have fun still, but uh, it's very fortunate to not get traded in two years. What was your favorite thing to make? And what did you learn to make for breakfast, lunch, and dinner then when you had to cook for yourself? You had, well, you, I so guess you had two, lunch. two different billet experiences, True. but at the first one. Yeah, the first one, I know that uh, every single morning I would basically just eat like a peanut butter sandwich on the way to the rink. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, always. Because I, I did not like to be very prepared and wake up like that extra 30 minutes. Um, I was 18. I didn't. I just wanted to get there. I wasn't that hungry. Then I'd eat something, and by the time the end of practice, I'd be like, "All right, I need to go eat food." And then I'd just eat like pizza pockets or chips oh, and frozen yeah. pizza. So you still went through that phase. Still didn't make anything. No, yet. not really. The only time I really cooked was like game days. Me and my roommate would make a giant breakfast after morning skate, go nap, and then just make a crap ton of pasta. Didn't your billets feed you interesting things for dinner yeah. at times? Yeah, <laughs> big time. What were they? Uh, 99% fried. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, it uh, definitely didn't help anything. <laughs> but at that time in my life, I was like, I don't care. Right. It's just, I'm just eating. You should explain a little bit just the billet, what the billet's role really is. Mm-hmm. I guess like that's probably a topic that we haven't even talked about in hockey. Yeah, so billet families are different families around. I think they have them in other sports as well, but probably most commonly in junior hockey. Um, it's just a family that takes in one or two players and you live with them throughout the year. They they cook for you. They Some probably do laundry for their billets um i don't know it's just like just come on in they have an extra room or two and you live with this completely new family who you've usually never met before um so that was definitely an experience too showing up to my first bill and be like hey i plan to live here all year yeah. nice yeah. to meet you yeah <laughs> it's super weird when you think about it oh yeah it is it's really yeah. weird billets literally can like make or break yeah. your time in junior hockey like you could have the best billets even living with another player helps a lot and uh i was lucky enough to be with awesome billets everywhere i went but i've definitely heard some billet horror stories Uh, they like either do it just to try and make money and they skimp out on like food and snacks and stuff or they're just like not pleasant to be around the kid is always over at a different billet house so yeah i mean there was kids we hung out with who were never at their billets except for sleeping Mm -hmm. um i think they only gave them grocery cards i'm not sure if they paid them i honestly have no idea i think they were grocery cards yeah Yeah. i think it was just grocery cards i remember we were in charge of bringing home the grocery cards for uh for the family yeah and just went to 
Like yeah. Pizza pockets. Yeah. Pizza pockets. <laughs> they were super nice. They were the best. They were. No, yeah. You, yeah. Your it was a great house. Fun. They had a cool hot tub, nice yard. Like, it was a great house for, like I said, it helped me grow up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, like then when you moved, uh, what made you want to move, I guess? Yeah. So people probably don't realize this, but uh, I lived with Lawson's fiance and her family. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. And um, moved there because Emma's little brother, Owen, was on the team my second year. And he's just like, we were, we got to know each other pretty well from hanging out with them. Um, 19 year old year. And in that summer, when I knew like he was actually going to be on the flyers and play, um, he just texted me one day. He's like, you should move in with us. I'm like, that sounds pretty good. You guys are good family. Um, I obviously was going to hang out with Owen most of that year anyway. And it was five minutes to the rink rather than 15 from the last year. So yeah, let's do it. And that was obviously a a completely different experience. Um, And as you guys all know, like we all still talk with that family quite a bit. I'm going to see them obviously at the wedding in a couple weeks, but yeah, that was super fun. And being able to live with, someone who you got pretty close with in owen and the whole weeb family it was just it made it that much it made it feel more like home i would say that year yeah did they all did they always bill it players or did they make an exception for you i think they had a long time before they made an exception yeah i think it was was a long time ago they did but i remember i remember that time too they i think i vouched for it as well (laughs) i don't know i wanted uh i remember well because that year i didn't play for the team um i left so it was his year alone and then i think at the tail end when you met emma Moore and stuff uh i remember talking to cam and sheila not sure if they had the idea and asked me about it or whatever but i was like yeah you guys should definitely bill it will and i just thought it would be cool then because you were close with me and winkler and then you guys you could kind of like share that along with with their family i knew they'd like you so it's like do it yeah it was so easy and a lot more conversations, like easier yeah. to talk with the family. Because mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, some billets, you eat dinner and you go sit in your room and watch TV. But there's mm-hmm. like everyone was always together. Um, obviously helped to have Owen, who was on the team too. And yeah, so that was a very nice experience. And that's that's why Winkler is, it's considered a home for me. I love going back and seeing people. And yeah, so it was great. Don't mean to get soft on you guys, but fun mm. fact, I remember very, very clearly the day that you left back to Minneapolis, and it was at my house, mm. and it was when I said uh, bye to Will, because it was like, we're never going to play with each other again, because I was leaving, and then I was thinking also, it was like, you know, might not really ever see, like, it was done. Like, our friendship pretty much was ended, because those people that leave your junior hockey team a lot of the times you know of them, but you don't ever become friends with them like closely again. Yeah, especially because I lived completely far away from everyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I I remember crying. Oh, I was gonna say oh, I re- I remember shed that. some tears. Yeah. I did. I hundred percent did. It was sad. Yeah, those are I tough. actually remember leaving that. Those are tough goodbyes. <laughs> we I a, remember that. I remember mine too. Yeah. We had such a fun like last half of that season i feel like yeah it was good we had such a fun friend group and then i think we spent i definitely didn't leave right away i spent like a full week after the season just hanging out with people because mm-hmm. like we said you never know if you ever see any of those guys again and then yeah we spent most of that week out out at the farm i believe and just had yeah. fun in winkler i think batesy was around a little bit yeah and, some yeah, other guys super fun and that's why it's even crazy now that, like, we I'm living back here now, like, ended up playing together again, ended up having a business together again on top of all of that, which is nothing I would have ever expected on that day. Would you say I was your top recruiter to come to UWS? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Probably. I mean. More than coach? Coach. Oh, Rich? <laughs> yeah. Nice. I didn't do it because of him. <laughs> did it because of I remember uh, you and Batesy. I remember Will yeah. and Batesy always asking about you. Batesy was big, too, of course. Mm-hmm. You, too. Remember, yeah. Cuddy, do you remember when uh, Lawson was in town playing against Duluth? Yeah. That and was me, a... <laughs> you, and Batesy met him at Old Chicago? Yeah, that was the first time I met Lawson. Yeah. 
That's old good. Chicago. Yeah. I think it happened Over twice. Pizza. He came back for playoffs or something. We brought you to the old shack. Yeah, I remember. I remember going to the old shack right before you guys left for Nashville. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably yeah. drinking. Yeah, we ditched your playoff game so we could go to Nashville for the first time. Yeah, I remember that. I do remember that. Let's talk about that. Yeah, but before we leave junior, is there any oh, like yeah. the best junior hockey story? Anything that you could tell? If not, that's all right. We'll go to college. But there's so many. I mean, is there a really good junior hockey story? There was. Yeah, and hopefully no one in Winkler's listening. But when uh, one, well, actually the Halloween, there's two that I want to touch on. Two. It might have been the same night. I can't remember. On Halloween, our 19 year old year, I remember. We were hanging out with a few other guys, and you took us through the uh, the colonies in the like late at night, and it was dark. And it was the first time; it was a culture shock for me. And I just remember like being a little spooked, like, "Oh my gosh, this is 15 minutes away from me." Colonies, <laughs> like the Hutter 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 oh, colonies, yeah. which they're probably great people, but it was completely new to me, and I was like. Is he taking me here on Halloween? Are they going to drop me off or make me <laughs> run back or something like that? But the second, this is when, uh, I don't know if this was the first year or second year, but me and Batesy spent a lot of time together too in Winkler. And uh, we used to go around during the fall, during leaf blowing season, and people would have their big giant leaf bags sitting out for the garbage guy to come take or whatever that week. And we load up his truck. We go around, steal all these leaf bags, and load them up in Batesy's truck. Or he would run over a couple, but that's for <laughs> him to tell. And uh, this one time, we got like we filled his whole truck bed with these bags of leaves, and we snuck over to this other teammate's house, who we knew had like a a coverable car, and we dumped probably 25 leaf bags and buried his car in leaves wow <laughs> and he came to the rink the next day and he was not happy but i don't know if we ever told him who it was he probably knew but uh that's hilarious we did that a few times i know and it's a harmless little prank it's a harmless yeah. prank but yeah. it wasn't like a Just random leaves. person funny yeah. thing is that's definitely Beatty's idea mm. but it's funny that you're with him now that's what i said into this exactly yeah. kid in the hotel to exactly messing around town yeah, and i roomed with batesy every road trip that 19 year old year every single time and we would just stay up so late laughing and messing around and then you know how batesy is he's a night owl yeah so he'd always be just be chatting or putting leaners on people's doors <laughs> I remember one time we got our backup goalie with a big leaner and he got really upset and said we destroyed his dress shoes um, <laughs> but yeah it was fun. Those are junior memories, the moments yeah. of junior. Mm -hmm. What what made you go to Superior? I don't really know. I think it was just because it was decently close to home. Um, going to Wisconsin school was – never really thought about it until 20-year-old playoffs when uh, Rich reached out. I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Like, I love – I've loved Duluth since I was a kid. Those are my favorite um, – out of town tournaments was going up to Duluth in youth hockey. So I was like, Oh, I knew nothing about it. I'd never been to superior before I committed. And yeah, so that's basically it. It was just close. Um, obviously I knew like two guys on the team, like hammer was already there. Um, I can't think of anyone else. And then, um, all of a sudden I just got messages from like J Martz on Twitter. He was DMing like, Hey, are you going to Superior? Now, I had never known J Martz, but I yeah. played with against him for two years. I was like, Yeah, we're going and then I actually met him in the summer. He came down to help he came down with Hammer to help him move into his apartment. And I just drove up just to see those guys and kinda of experience Superior in the summer and yeah. That's really the only reason. It was close to home. I wanted to keep playing hockey and tuition was pretty good. Mm -hmm. When you met all the other guys, when you met Cuddy, what, what was your first? I will, I'll, Do you I remember will the first always time? remember the first time <laughs> I met Cuddy, because me and Batesy were gonna room together. Um, actually, it took me. I had to recruit Batesy to go there too. He didn't really decide until like August. Oh, I so you went without him? I think I decided him. in like, like right as the season was. Yeah, I think what was the first one mm -hmm. out of our group? And then, uh, so me and Batesy were like, yeah, we'll room together. We didn't really know who the third roommate was gonna be. Um, and then like probably a month before we just heard it was going to be this kid from the Winnipeg blues. 
uh, the sharpshooter, Mr. Cudmore. <laughs> the heavy hitter. The heavy hitter. The guy we're always scared to play in the corners against. <laughs> yeah, the guy that should have stayed in the America and played hockey. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> learned my physicality in Canada there, bud. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the first story of meeting Cuddy was, I just remember hearing this truck roll up, <laughs> and he was wearing a cutoff tank. <sighs> and uh, me and Bates are like, well, here we go. This is our roommate. Let's go meet this kid. And then we walked out, and it was pretty easy from there. But uh, in that old shack, it was so small. And it was a bad day for Cuddy, let's just say, because we had those three bedrooms, and we drew cards for the bedrooms. Um, highest got to pick the bedroom first, so-and-so. I picked the highest card, so I picked the big room. I think Batesy was second. And then Cuddy drew... <laughs> Got like a, he drew like a two or three. Like yeah. He had no shot in winning, and he got stuck with a room that's probably the size of this room, maybe mm-hmm. a little smaller. It was probably smaller. I would say smaller. Yeah. Probably smaller. And like, oh, welcome to the house, bud. He probably <laughs> thought we rigged the deck or something before he got there. Um, but we moved in this dresser. I don't know where, how long that thing was sitting outside because there was probably three hundred spiders crawling around it, and. None of us liked spiders. That was our first bonding moment. And we yeah. were screaming about spiders crawling on our arms while hosting this heavy ass <laughs> dresser up these mini stairs trying to get it through. Was it Cuddy's? Yo, it was yeah, his it dresser. Was my yeah, dresser. he pulled up. We just immediately started moving all this stuff in. And so we had that was like a fun first hour of ever hanging out. And then we tried to get his box spring in and it just didn't fit yeah. in the house. <laughs> Try to get my bed up there. There was no way. That's how small the house was. I was nervous. I didn't know these two guys. And I'm like, I'm bringing this dresser full of spiders up the stairs and a box spring that doesn't fit. I'm like, these guys probably think I'm stupid. <laughs> probably went to Wearing a cutoff. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> He's like, I just came from Bemidji. <laughs> Those are <laughs> my sister. Yeah. yeah. Those first judge a book by its cover Those moments so are always funny. so yeah. funny because everyone is. That first week in Superior when, like, because us three got pretty close. Well, me and Bates were close, and then Cuddy got really close to us, like, really it quick. We really did everything quick. together, and classes hadn't started yet. So, you know, that's just fun. We're just all hanging out, meeting all the new guys. I remember um, I remember meeting Taver for the first time vividly. I forgot what he said to me, but he made me laugh, like, instantly. Um, I remember meeting Yelly the first night. That was before I met Cuddy, I think. You were there that night before. Um, yeah. I mean, just meeting everyone for the first time and seeing where we're at now is actually insane. Mm-hmm. Yelly was a stranger. Cuddy was a stranger. All these guys were just people I'd never met before in my life. And now it's like, I'll say anything to you. It doesn't matter now. Mm-hmm. It's super weird to think about. Yeah, I know. I, I, I like... It was good that you guys got to all hang out for a good chunk of it, and that just helped mold the friend group for for when I came in too. Just yeah, made we got, sense. I just we got stuck to all up. you guys. We became friends very quickly, all of us freshmen, um, because some guys were living with older older teammates. Um, so a lot of the times they would travel across the bridge over to our little house, and we would have like all the freshman guys hanging out and. That's really how we got close that first year. And then, obviously, the OG trip to Nashville. I was a founding father of the Nashville trip. Huh. Mm-hmm. You were? Yep. What did you do? I was one of the founding fathers. Sorry. I remember that night. We were just sitting on our couch, me, Batesy, and Will. Was it still during hockey, or was it right after? Um, It might have been at the near end of the hockey season. But we're just like, spring break's coming up. We had that zero plans. Everyone's going to these cool spots, like vacation, warm spots, and we're like, where are we going to go? Mm-hmm. I think we were watching a TV show called Nashville. We were. And oh. we just Googled it. We're like, how far Cuddy, is the drive? That's me, and Cuddy how logged, me and Cuddy logged a lot of TV oh, hours together yeah. that year. A lot. We crushed Nashville. We crushed, like... Can you watch Jersey oh. Shore? Batesy was Batesy, a big Jersey Shore. Batesy oh. was the one that turned on Jersey Shore. He was a Jersey Shore. But yeah, we were actually... Yeah, we were watching Nashville. That's TV hilarious. Show. That that's how you guys picked it. Yeah, kind of one of those moments when like you're with your family, you just see the trip ad on vacation. You're like, hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. let's you? go call the number on the screen <laughs> and set. book it, our vacation. It was perfect timing. Then Yelly was probably over too, and we're just like, 
why don't we just go to Nashville? Did you guys have any idea that's what it was like? Like, you, did you know about Broadway <laughs> no. or anything? Like, I oh god, no. no. I had no, <laughs> no idea, idea when <laughs> that's uh, hilarious. when you guys said like like the next year when I was there and you guys suggested it, I thought like what why what's so cool about that place yeah i I think like no idea i think we're just in this country music phase yeah just like yeah we have no plans we just looked up some pictures and i I remember just getting a notepad out and i'm like calculating up gas yeah this guy calculated the miles in his (laughs) truck i'm trying to figure out hotels like we're trying to make it as cheap as possible because we're like college freshmen yeah we had six guys in one two bedroom hotel room yep (laughs) That's hilarious. We had to sneak it, the two other guys in because we told them only four people were coming. Yeah. That's how low budget our first trip was. Wow. We did stop. That was the first time we stopped in Illinois, yep. Ellie's house. Then we got up, and Cuddy almost ran over a police officer on that trip in his truck. Legit. <laughs> That's Legit true. almost broke a police officer's leg. How did mm-hmm. you do that? Well, we were dropping Batesy off at, uh, I don't know, he's going to Clouds walk. game. Yeah. What he was playing and anyway the sun was coming down this cop was standing right in the middle of the road with like a <laughs> sign like doing the parking stuff and i could barely see so i'm like it was bright and i'm like like whatever and then i'm going a decent decent like speed like probably 20 25 and then i don't know if it was yelly or someone but they're just like stop <laughs> her tray was right next to me in the middle too and he like hammered me like this and i'm just like what and then there's a police officer right there and i'm like oh my god i would have just ran him over if you didn't stop me yeah, yeah. Well, god he would have been in jail and we would have yeah. had to take his truck to nashville wow yeah. that's crazy i would have been in the yeah, slammer that's when uh nashville was literally i mean obviously it stuck it it was great because we've gone back every mm-hmm. year um but yeah, we we'd scooter. We stayed so far away from Broadway. Yeah, like so far. We had no idea what no, to expect. No, we had yeah. no idea. Well, you're not gonna plan to stay there if you don't really even know what Broadway is. Yeah, so I think we chose the cheapest hotel. Yeah, that's exactly what we did. And we stayed for two nights. Our travel was <laughs> like, our travel was way longer than our time in Nashville, yeah. basically. And uh, stayed for two nights. We ended up bird scootering all the way back, and yeah, it was a great time. It was a legendary first trip. We were there the same exact weekend, St. Patrick's weekend, just like mm-hmm. every time. And, yeah. So what kind of a student were you in college? What did you call yourself? Those that don't know. Above average. Above average? Yeah. I think I graduated 3-5. What were your strong suits in class? Writing. Writing. That's about it. No numbers. No numbers. My right. worst. I got. I think I would have. I, I mean, I would have had a higher GPA, but uh, accounting class. That was tough. Oh, yeah, that was tough. If you were to pick one guy out of the group too, who would it be to have a class with? Yelly. Yelly. Hundred percent. How come? And I mean, we all. Me and Cuddy had also ninety-five percent of our classes <laughs> together all four years. Like there that was maybe true. one a semester we didn't have together. Otherwise, we would just always. We be had together. the same schedule. Yelly was every in day. majority of those as well. But yeah. We would plan that on purpose, obviously. But yeah, Yelly was definitely the one you want to have a class with because he was really good in school, worked hard at it. So you got to use his answers and stuff. Or uh, what? Or how did you leverage Yelly? More like notes. More like notes. <laughs> he was a good note taker. Oh, I've seen his note taking. It was. Writing's <laughs> worse than mine. <laughs> Chicken scratch. But he that was early on in college, and then he... You didn't take as many notes towards the end. But, uh, yeah, he was definitely the one I would say really helped. Helped a lot, but we also all had some strong suits. And the COVID year definitely boosted the GPA, but that's for other reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had a I had a math class with Will. Uh, it was Will. Oh. It was Cuddy. Who else was? Trey was in it. I think that was the main group that, that we were with. the worst yep, class. class. We, we got in... We did everything in that class. We got in trouble in that class. Yeah, we got in trouble in a college class. Yeah. We got yelled at by the teacher. Yeah, like we, we were did. in middle school again. <laughs> we had some laugh attacks in there where we just couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, and the worst part was I think that was an 8 a.m. Yeah. Huh. So, no, it was so quiet, and there's maybe 12 kids in the whole class, and four of them were us. And 
we were older than everyone in that class and we were still getting yelled at by the teacher. Yeah. Well, that's because Trey would always say something and she then was a brand it would new, make, brand new make teacher us laugh. Too. Oh my gosh, that was tough. I didn't learn one thing. I'll never forget that class. That was the hardest class I've ever taken. Yeah, fun fact. That night we wrote the famous song that no one will ever hear was during that semester when we stayed up till 4 a.m. writing this song and we had an exam at 8 a.m. Yeah. And yep. that was the best exam I ever took in that class. Crazy kids. Yep. Yep. Back yeah. Back when we were fun. <laughs> I think I think we may have to play a little snippet of it, like Maybe. find a portion for this podcast clip, Maybe. and share. Maybe a little bit. the the thing, but yeah, pretty much like we wrote a song. I was on guitar, and then Will was on vocals with Cuddy background singing. Will is the main writer. I would say, oh, maybe we all wrote it a little bit. I don't know, but we just collabed and finished a song from start to finish. Not even like one chorus. It was f- every chorus of the song every verse right to the end to mm-hmm. the last drum and guitar mm-hmm. took us probably four hours and then went to bed at 5 a.m and got up for a math test at eight yeah it's crazy you believe that frizz could not be me that's for sure ah. that's their they don't make them like us anymore <laughs> that was <a laughs> they don't make them like us 97s anymore <laughs> that was a legendary school memory college yeah. was fun the hockey side of it though like you obviously loved college hockey, but anything that you took away from it? Yeah. I definitely learned how to stay positive. Um, freshman year, like, we were not very good freshman year. And I think I played every game or scratched once, scratched once freshman year. So, and there's a full season, 25 games, whatever. Played decent numbers regular shift whatever and then the next year complete opposite like in and out every weekend some weekends i would never play um and that sucked that was the first time in my life that i had to deal with that with something that you love so much and you work so hard at like all week in practice and maybe doing a little extra or whatever and then you get to friday and it's like oh what is the point Especially when you know you're like right there, yeah, and you just be like, "Why is that guy in?" Yeah, it's too- <laughs> <laughs> those thoughts a hundred percent went through my head. But um, definitely learned that year to just enjoy it and be like, "Hey, I ain't going to the NHL. I'm here to do school." And it, when you're playing D three, yeah, hockey is super important, but it is it's not the most important. Maybe some people it is. Um, so definitely learned how to just stay positive and make sure that you're still having fun and having fun with your buddies because they c- I could have taken the mindset, which I'm sure I did some days where if I was like that and crabby and mad at the situation the whole year, it actually would have been the most miserable year ever. And so learning how to just adjust and kind of take it on the chin and be like, you know, the game's been good to me for however many years, every once in a while. It's not going to go your way. There's a lot of amazing players out there. Um, so, yeah, just kind of giving it your all and sticking to it, even though things don't go your way. That was the first year I ever had to really dig a little deeper and be like, hey, it is what it is. And at the first few times... I, you probably didn't want to be around me on those days until the game was over. Yeah. We kind of got to learn that. It's new mm-hmm. when it happens. It's completely when you keep playing new. and then you get cut a couple times from the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new way to like handle the that reality right. in a way. You don't get scratched in youth hockey. You get to play every game. In high school, I play every game. In Winkler, in two years, I missed one game in two years. Yeah. Freshman year, like I said, one game. And then that sophomore year, I was like, well, this is the first time for me. But at the same time, there's probably other people and at other schools or wherever that have it way worse. Mm-hmm. So that was a big eye opener and be like, you know what? It is what it is. And then junior year or yeah, junior year, junior, was junior fun. senior. Junior year, we only, played, we only played 10 games. I was in 100 percent of those. Nice. <laughs> oh, man, Funny in, thing is, is like two. it's so <laughs> weird. Like I don't remember. You could have told me yeah. that. No, no, you were no one ten. Would yeah, Frizz exactly. two. I wouldn't even known that. I wouldn't. Either. Don't even remember that. Yeah, 
had no idea. Frizz has the best story though of, yeah, in that one of those two games. <laughs> yeah. Why am I supposed we'll, to say? We'll it talk now about it. I think it's we'll talk about it on your interview. Yeah, we'll talk about it on yours, but that's an awesome. That'll story. be a great question. Yeah, Lawson yeah. doesn't remember me not playing because he was always on the ice focusing on the game, so he wasn't oh, too worried year, he was on the bench. That year, Lawson was not focused on the game. He would be on his computer until about 30 minutes before the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. That's when he really dove into his vlogs. Yeah, that's yeah. when I was making more content. That year is arguably still my favorite year of college, the COVID year. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, senior year was I mean, yeah. senior year was incredible too for other reasons because that's when the hockey guys took off more so. But junior year, we spent so much time together. Like that's when everything was like, like we had online class for three hours out of the day. We'd go to practice. We didn't even play hockey games until January. Play Monopoly. We played Monopoly. For a stint? No, no, no. That was sophomore year. Mm-hmm. Oh. That was Christmas break. Oh, junior year, was junior year, we were at the new, sh- the new shack. But, uh, yeah, like, that was just, I don't know. That was so fun. And we would bend the rules a little bit. But if we didn't, then we probably would have had a terrible time. <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, those are the things a, you remember way like more than – you remember those things way more than if you're playing hockey or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like we were living life on the edge. Every day. You know? I don't think we. Re- I realized that, too. At that moment, you know, that that was oh, yeah. becoming the coolest year of college hockey or college in general. That's when everything in life changed. But it was very fun. It was very, like, kind of wild. Well, it helped us because, like... <laughs> it was wild. Like, the uh, videos blowing up and yeah, stuff at that yeah. time, too. Like, that was just crazy. Uh, our team rules were, were essentially for, like, 95% of the year where you could have 10 people max at one house. Yeah. How are you we, supposed to do that with the w- hockey team? What did we have in our group? Ten people. Yeah. So it just worked out that it was just like, okay, we don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to worry if Johnny has the 11th guy and has to stay home or something like that. It just worked out to just naturally just always do those kind of hangouts mm-hmm. as a group. And that year was just like, I'll never forget New Year's Eve that year. Because, like you said, we couldn't really do anything. And that's when we were finally going to start games like the next week in January. So rules were extra strict. I'll never forget getting a text from a house that was down the road. I'm not going to say who it was. Meet us at the library parking lot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I remember that. I was like, okay. <laughs> I like, forgot about that's that. That's interesting. Whatever. So we walked over to the library. Say, hey, happy new year to these other guys. And how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. Hope your winter break was good. And all of a sudden, <laughs> it's like, check these out. <laughs> started firing at exactly midnight fireworks in the library parking lot yeah i will never forget that moment mm. i had never i had never heard that story mm-hmm. yeah it was good times but i guess who it was they lived pretty close to us they used to host a lot of fun stuff oh yeah i know uh, who it is but <laughs> uh i don't know just little things like that are exactly why you remember those moments more than sitting in the stands for a game or something yeah 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 i, I agree with that and then senior year was an absolute blast because mm-hmm. the hockey guys were rolling we went on our first tour i don't know it was just great mm-hmm. very very fortunate that everything lined up for all of us to meet up at uws yeah it is it's a very lucky thing that happened and what were you i guess curious of uh your thoughts on just the fact that you were one of the first people that were in content and was very chill about it or very like uh i felt like i could uh you know bring a camera around you and you wouldn't really care you would be more for it why do you think you were like that is it because i knew you before maybe maybe it was that and when was that that was junior year it must have been your senior year well, I would yeah. say your I would say your um, sophomore year though, even before. Oh that, yeah, the Shack tours, like the old Shack tour, the the road trip vlog. I only felt like I could bring my GoPro out around mm-hmm. like you and Yelly trickled in pretty early to being someone that was Cuddy was pretty good for it. Cuddy was great. Um, yeah, Fizz I don't really bad. know where that came no, from. No, I was not a part. <laughs> of I don't know it. where that came from because there was times where I like would like delete Instagram and stuff where I just like didn't care about social media at all. I'd go on like a few weeks span and be like, eh, whatever. And then 
I don't know. Just kind of, you just got me into it, I guess. That's really the only explanation. Maybe once I saw a video come to life, I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That's what it was like for me too, because I've never met anybody who like knew mm-hmm. how to edit videos and stuff. And then I just kind of peeked over his shoulder while he was doing it. I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool. Yeah. And when you see someone enjoy or leave a comment of a video and be like, wow, those guys seem pretty fun. Okay. And you feel good Maybe about I'm yourself. Pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's pretty easy to be on camera if I don't have to change who I am. Yeah. And that's true. exactly why it worked. I didn't know that you actually were like a fan of editing this whole entire time. Well, yeah, that's why I'm the podcast producer. Yeah, three years later, could have <laughs> used you, man. Year one. Remember when you tried to train him with the bar golf video? And oh, it yeah. Took forever? oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Every- whole team was mad at me. Yeah. Everyone kept oh, yeah. asking me. I was like, oh, "It's Cuddy, man. He's editing the video. Sorry, it's taking so long." It was just getting to know the software that took me a while. Yeah, I remember that very clearly. Um, but no, that's cool. It's cool that, uh, that was your thought on it. Cause it made it easier for mm-hmm. sure. And I didn't know which part I liked the most, but I think I found a decent role in the group and helping out where I can. Like I absolutely hate editing. So found a different way to help out mm-hmm. and I don't know. Things are just very grateful. Everyone's slotted in decently now, which Everyone's thinks that, yeah, it's, it, it seems like it would be. Oh, take a month and everyone will slot it. And it's like, it's a way longer process than that to really it until last understand. It took until basically the spring break tour. I would say even after that. Like yeah, even after that. It, like even considering this year that you can truly see that he slots in very well with actually editing and doing that stuff versus Frizz. And you kind of think like, oh, can we like get Frizz there or like, but there is some friction with it. Like he doesn't like enjoy it quite as much, but you don't know if that's just like the first buffer month of it. And then he'll like break through and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It, it, but like that no, just no, takes years right. of like repetition to officially say like, all right, I hate this. I got to do something else. Yeah. And I think when I thought always found it, I always found it so fascinating when there's like you text in the group chat or something, zoom call with, celsius at so and so that's why do these people want to talk to us like that's insane to me and then i didn't even say anything ever on those calls i would just like either sit to the side of you off camera and listen or maybe hop on and say hello and then say nice to meet you at the end but i think that part kind of grabbed me a little bit because i found it so cool that people actually wanted to work with us yeah there, well, you were good at like talking to people like that too. That was hard. Like too, you're though. better at that, or like that fits you well. There's a funny story of that. You, I haven't really even shared this, but probably, probably cost us something. It was that um, when I got the COVID shot, I had I was like extremely sick the night before or the night of, and I didn't realize it, but I had a call with Felipe with Sportsnet that next morning at like 9 a.m. And I was feeling just horrible. So I didn't really prepare much. Like, wasn't even sure what it was about. I get on that call with Felipe, and there's eight people from Sportsnet, oh. like <laughs> official, like Brutal. looking people, everyone in their own thing. Like, and I'm like feeling horrible. And they expected, like, I think a pitch deck and like a whole entire thing and had the hardest conversation that was somewhat awkward because what was communicated with us wasn't with them. And it was like, yeah, they, I mean, they never even talked to us after that. It was, it was, <laughs> it was not fun. That's I just, hilarious. I just remember that now that you talked about the early days of those calls and those calls were so crazy. Remember that one time we went on the podcast and all 10 of us oh, tried to yeah. be on the podcast. Yeah. Oh yeah. We got right. so excited and for then it. She didn't press record and we had to do it again. Yeah. And all 10 of us did it again. Yep. I don't even remember that. Which yeah, I can't believe it was we our uh, first podcast. But we did it again. With yeah, Claire, uh, Claire, uh, bought that from Wisconsin. I don't remember even doing it a second time. Yeah, yeah. I, I would always remember like, or this the best was when we'd have like three guys in one camera, one house, and then the other house, and then Lawson would be in his apartment, <laughs> and then just the meeting would go on, and we all just kind of sit there, just like awkward, like. We don't really know what we're doing, but 
this is cool. Yeah, I remember that. No one, no one really knew what they no. were doing. You just did it, got through it, pretty much. Yeah. What else you got for me, Frizz? Yeah, I guess that was a lot of, a lot of great stuff. I learned a lot. We uh, also have some fan questions that we haven't uh, answered yet. Some of these are for almost. Me? Yes, for Will. Some of these are actually like kind of funny, like random fun facts. Mm-hmm. Maybe learn a little bit about Can you. Can I choose if I answer? Yeah. Um, Do a little rapid fire. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll rapid fire it up. So Danielle is wondering, what was your dream job as a kid? Not like when you were like three and you wanted to be a transformer or something, but like maybe I when you actually. never wanted to be a transformer. <laughs> 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 maybe like when you actually started to like. What did you think you were going to be when you when One, you grew up? One, always thought I was going to be in the NHL, obviously. Probably just like everyone in this room. Um, but the second, I wanted to be an oncologist, which is a cancer doctor. Okay, fancy. Yeah, didn't work out, but I thought that would have been super cool. Dang. Yep. Yeah, I did not know that about you. I did you. a school project on it. Hmm. One, there's like, to what do you want to be when you grow up? One part of the presentation was a hockey player, and one was a doctor. Hmm. Both, uh, both failed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Failure. So here's a good one. What makes you proud to be from Minnesota? <laughs> I like that question. Yeah, <laughs> that That's is a tough from. Question. Um, I know what mine is. What makes me proud to be from Minnesota? Um. I would say just the Minnesota nice that everyone thinks Minnesotans are, whether that's, that's not everyone, obviously that's impossible, but, uh, I'd say it's a pretty homey, like home, like home based culture, um, family based. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's what, that's what makes me proud. Nice. And the Vikings. One day they'll eventually make you very proud. They'll make me proud eh? one day. Uh, okay, this is an interesting one. Michelle is wondering, let's hope you never get there, but what is what would be your last meal on death row? Jeez. <laughs> oh. Let's hope you never get there, but I know everyone's got a final. What's your final plate? Tortellini. <laughs> Cuddy's chicken patties. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to say... Probably a, just a good plate of either like ravioli or maybe a chicken parm and a salad. Big Italian pasta feast. Okay, that's a good one. I want to be nice and full before they give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what else we got here? We got um, what is one lesson that you had to learn the hard way? Wow. We're going deep. Said we were going deep. I think lying to my parents. Oh, Ooh, got a, a spanking? Uh, in high school. Tell us the story. So no, no spanking. <laughs> I mean, I just told them I was one place when I was at another place. Did they find out? Oh, yeah. That's what oh. I learned the hard way. <laughs> oh. They found out that I was at a party and have may or may not have had a beverage or two. Oh, oh wow. That was tough. <laughs> Still remember, so it must have stuck. Yeah, don't <laughs> lie to your parents. It never works out. Did you get grounded or what? No more parties? What was your punishment? School I don't know if home? I ever... The punishment... Oh, I actually do remember Lisa really mad. I do remember the punishment. One, disappointment, which is terrible. Oh, yeah. Two, yard work after oh, yeah. a late night. Ooh. They always knew. Sorry, Mom. Uh, this one's a pretty easy one, but a lot of people will not know this. How did you and Sam meet, and how long have you been together? UWS. Um, I'd say like everyone always hung out, the men's and women's hockey teams, and just throughout the year. Um, we never really were friends or anything, I would say, until like I think it was February or March of freshman year. Um and we just started hanging out, and yeah, and it's been four years in le- in May. It was four years, so wow, 
Long yep. time. Might be something coming. Uh oh. Oh, hint. I'm must be, Sam not listen to this at show or what? Probably not. Wow. Well, we're going to mark this, and this might be the first hint, folks. So we need another bachelor party next summer. <laughs> <laughs> we did need someone to fill in year two. <laughs> yeah. But that's for me to know, and I'll tell you guys when the time is right. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, uh, you'll need my help. We'll yeah. see it at the on the big screen at a Twins game. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking August <laughs> August 5th at around uh, 4 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> that's funny. Um, okay, another one here. Because I'm sure we'll we'll ask this question every every time we do a different person, but give us your top three THG memories. Mm. Mm. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have an order. Yeah, you can just name your three most memorable ones. In the top three is the first spring break tour. One hundred and twenty five percent. That has to be on the list because that was the first taste of the fun um being able to do that with each other i don't know how dave coordinated everything (laughs) but that was insane and that was maybe that was some of the best seven days of my entire life yeah in a consecutive stretch like that was absurdly fun so that's on the list um two i think being able to work with the wild i thought that team yep I think that was pretty cool and being a part of hockey day this past year. Um, and then three Stanley cup finals, which one, I don't know both Mm -hmm. because just being able to go to a Stanley cup finals was, was a bucket list and now Mm -hmm. done it twice. So it's good answers. Not, not winning the chicklets cup. Nope. It's not a top (laughs) three, but it's up there. Only if we go back to back. (laughs) All right. No, those are, those are good. I like those. Hard. We'll save them for us too. We should keep that question for yeah. for the rest of us. Yeah. Can't take my answers. Take one of them. There is. If you let me. There is one more question that we could say, just if we want to keep it on the deeper level. So deep. What? What's one thing that you'd tell your childhood self? One piece of advice. Wow. Skate harder. <laughs> Um, do that extra squat rep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't be afraid to touch a weight in high school. <laughs> um, I would just say just just stick to it and stay true to yourself. Because there was definitely times in my life where I tried to be like cool and someone I wasn't. Um, and those times always just ended up sucking in the <laughs> long run. So just staying true to yourself, not being too cool for anything, and definitely trying new things. Go try everything new that you can because there was definitely moments that, like I said, I was a little bit reserved and timid as a kid there. I was like, eh, I'm good. I don't want to do that, but just try everything. Well, that's awesome. What's uh, something that you want to accomplish or do in your future? Hmm. Personally, not or business. Not, not like money related or anything. No, no, don't do it like uh Mm-mm-mm. like yeah, like maybe anything that in your future that you want to yeah. I want to hopefully be running like a huge sports marketing company one day. I think that is be cool. Within reach, yeah, and within reason. Sure. Um still a long way to go. I'm not saying it's a, gi- a gimme mm-hmm. but yeah that's what i want to do it's a good answer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's exactly the answer i was looking for something like that something big something sporty <laughs> <laughs> yeah she meaty all the way you'd be good at it sweet yeah. well thanks Any other guys questions I'm curious last time you ever get to ask will a question yeah you don't yeah. get to know you anything to, else about has me to tell ever. the truth i'm on the hot seat do you have a red flag Probably. Red flag. I don't know. If Sam was here, what would she say your red flag is? Watching documentaries. <laughs> Could be. That, yeah, that's a good red flag. <laughs> she hates documentaries. Do you do the dishes and everything? Yeah, I've gotten better at that. 
have to do that. Oh, I That's think teamwork. Here, uh, this is one of the questions that I remember. Oh, um, yeah, go. Um, I tend to leave my like toiletries on the counter by the bathroom sink too when I need to uh, put them away. Gotcha. That's a red flag. Some people know this. I know we know it. Some of the fans might know it, but what is that guilty pleasure of yours that you just can't seem to get away from? Ice cream. The sweets. Ice cream so and donuts. <laughs> Ice cream and donuts are two of my favorite things in the world. Specifically. Glazed donuts. Specifically glazers from Quick Trip. Um, there were some Sundays where I'm not very proud of that I would eat like three or four of them <laughs> watching football throughout the day. I was right there with you. Yep. <laughs> but uh, ice cream <laughs> doesn't make me feel good ever, but I love it. That's fair. It's good. Yeah. I think we I think you nailed everything. I think we covered so much about you, Will. It was great. I enjoyed it as a as an interviewee. I, I was a little nervous coming into this. Really? Yeah, I don't really like to answer well, questions about me. I hope that you had fun answering those. I did. Because I think it was fun for fun for us, hopefully fun for you guys listening. It's making me excited, actually, to dive into, uh, like, I think w- maybe yours will be the worst idea-wise because now I got, like, those are some good questions that we can ask mm-hmm. Cuddy and Frizz and Yelly. <laughs> like, I can't wait it's to It's going to be fun Cuddy. because everyone's going to have very different stories. Yeah. yeah. Similar, but different details yeah so we all came from very different backgrounds yeah exactly yeah, exactly I, I think uh i think we depending on schedule wise but i think for fun we could throw out a poll on the insta story see who they'd want who everyone would want to see next or yeah. um we'll keep throwing the question question thing out there you guys did awesome helped us out a little bit mm-hmm. and we appreciate you guys always messaging us commenting and leaving us feedback, so you keep betcha. rocking it. Yeah, one well, of you guys should sign us out this time since I'm the guest. I can sign us out. I was just gonna say, yeah. At the, at the end of the day, we want to have you know guests on this show, but now in the summer we're going into we've got a lot of banking to do with some uh, my wedding coming up. That's gonna be a fun recap episode. I'm excited for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so th- this is our version of just making sure we're posting every single week, like we have since January which is pretty cool Mm -hmm. and uh we're gonna run through every all these guys here and get some good interviews with our own stories so thank you guys for listening to the fan club podcast i think did you plug everything already austin no there's always stuff to plug but plugger plug away yeah so (laughs) don't forget if you enjoyed this episode please give it a like comment share comment share any of the micro cuddy works hard on doing and uh yeah we appreciate you guys being engaged and helping us out with these episodes and let's keep on rocking it another episode in the books you betcha all right yelly sign us out